just a disclaimer before I start this video. This review is going to be split into two videos. So this is going to be part one. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing Netflix's 2023 fantasy animated film entitled Nimona. The film was directed by Troy Quain and Nick Bruno. It was originally supposed to be produced by Blue Sky Studios. However, following Disney's acquisition of 21st Century Fox, or Blue Sky Studios' parent company, production received pushback because of the film's LGBTQ themes. The film was delayed several times and ultimately canceled due to Blue Sky's closure in 2021, but Anna Pierna Pictures revived the project the following year, where DNEG provided animation and Netflix acquired worldwide distribution. So, the story itself takes place in a medieval futuristic kingdom that looks similar to big cities like New York City. The citizens of the kingdom are protected by the Institute for the Elite Knights, who all descended from the heroine Glorith. And the story of Glorith is that she and her knights banished a great black monster from the kingdom. And in the following years, the Elite Knights were trained to kill the monster if they ever encountered it. So the story itself follows a shapeshifter, a teenage shapeshifter named Nimona. And Nimona is played by Chloe Grace Moretz. And Nimona befri befriends a knight named Ballister Boldheart, played by Riz Ahmed, who is accused of killing the current queen of the kingdom, Queen Valorant. So for background on Ballister's character, he was the first commoner in the kingdom to be knighted, which, which sparked controversy because his character wasn't of noble birth. It's oh. tradition for the knights in the elite institution to be born of noble birth. So the queen of the kingdom, Queen Valorant, saw how devoted and brave he was, decided to give him a chance to be a hero. But during his knighting ceremony, the queen is murdered by Ballister. But we soon learned that Ballister's sword was raked, but obviously the kingdom doesn't know that, so he's framed as a murderer and he lives in hiding. So he meets this girl, Nimona, and she decides to help him prove his innocence. So what I really want to focus on um, with this film are the themes. I think that this film is clearly an allegory for lgbtq plus people and their identities and experiences particularly those of trans and gender fluid individuals and like acceptance and whatnot so the actual film is based off of the nimona comic book written by andy stevenson who said nimona was a character that actually came about when i was a teenager in high school and it was a time where I was having a lot of really big feelings. And those were feelings that I didn't know where to put them. Just, Stevenson continued to say, being a shapeshifter was a big fantasy for me. I really wanted to be able to change my body and my presentation at will to be everything that people wanted me to be. But also aggressively the opposite of that as well. Nimona became an outlet for that. She was this punk, just like total rebel, total rule, rule breaker, always doing the first thing that she thought of always following her heart and just becoming this creature of any size any level of power so the way um acceptance is portrayed through boldheart's character is well boldheart wasn't accepted because he was a commoner and as for nimona um she's a shapeshifter so she's seen as a monster so society doesn't accept her because she's different banished and I like how they explored explored this or the explored the theme of acceptance because it was done in a very subtle way. It was woven throughout the story without coming off as like too cliche or too preachy because for example, if you've ever watched Marvel's Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I can't remember when that came out. It's it's been a while. But at the I think it was like the end of at the end of the season when um Sam finally becomes Captain America there was like this long monologue that he went on about like race like 
race, race relations, race and racism and whatnot. I can't remember. I can't remember that well. But I remember when I was watching it, I wanted, I wanted to like it, but I don't know. The monologue just seemed like very cringe. It was just very cringy and hard to listen to because it just came off as, like I said, too preachy and kind of like too cliche, like almost as if it felt like a white person had written the monologue and it wasn't really written by a black person. Because I feel like if a black person had written that, that monologue, well, first of all, I don't think it should have been a monologue. I think that it could have been, you can explore like race and gender and sexuality and whatnot. You could explore that stuff, but in a way that is subtle and doesn't come off as like, like I said, too cringy or like too cliche. There's a way to do it. And I like how this movie does it because it's like subtle and it's, it'll also make it easy or make it more palatable for, for like audiences. So as I said, Ballister and Nimona um befriended one another because she's trying to help him prove his innocence so they've they spent all this time together so and throughout the film Ballister kind of struggles to separate his feelings from the clear brainwashing that he experienced from the institute and I think this was really interesting because it was kind of a commentary on flawed systems within government or in this case monarchies and I think that Ballister's character really needed to meet Nimona because Nimona she she doesn't care like she doesn't care about fitting the norm she does what she wants like she is herself and she kind of tries to teach him or help him recognize how um, flawed the system is because Ballister wants to uphold justice, but he only knows how to do it through the law. But the law in their system betrayed him because it framed him as a murderer. And well, yeah, so Nomona's character is there to help him recognize how flawed the system is. And there are times that you need to betray the law. And I also think that this film was the perfect time to be released because, or especially in light of all the anti-trans and L and anti-LGBTQ plus legislation in America because like in our real life the people in power in this film are trying to maintain tradition or the norm and it allows people like Ballister who argue in favor of the norm to understand that the system is rigged and it doesn't benefit anyone other than the ones in power because Ballister's sword was rigged by the director and he believes that it's just her to blame alone but Nimona tries to convince him that the whole system is rigged I think that, or I don't think that I know this is a powerful quote um, from the film. Nimona had said, little kids, they grow up believing that they can be a hero if they drive the sword into the heart of anything different. I think that this represents what's um, going on in our world currently, um, specifically in America. It's like the banning of books in schools or revised curriculums of history, specifically African-American history. Because if you think about the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, he said, we believe in teaching kids facts and how to think, but we don't believe they should have an agenda imposed on them. And I think that we as a society, we're so afraid of people who don't fit into the norm and we're worried that an agenda will be put onto our children. But I think that the only people pushing, we're the, we are the only ones that are pushing an agenda because we are indoctrinating our youth to be ignorant and hateful through the banning of books and revising curriculums. Because when you try to remove history, it makes us ignorant and it it teaches, it teaches us to be ignorant and it teaches us to, to be hateful. I think that, well, obviously education is very important and we need to learn the history of our country because then we learn from our mistakes and we learn to do better. We learn not to repeat our mistakes. But I think that right now we're just regressing <laughs> as a country. But so, yeah, that's why I, that I feel like this film is this is the perfect time to release the film, especially in light of what's going on in America right now. So in the movie, Nimona and Ballister come up with a plan to get a confession out of the director who is the one that um, 
blamed him, as I said before. So Nimona shapeshifts into Ballister's ex-boyfriend, Ambrosius, I believe. And obviously the director doesn't realize that Ambrosius is not Ambrosius. He's actually Nimona. So um, the director confesses that she believes that they shouldn't go against tradition because tradition is what kept the kingdom safe all these years so she killed the queen to maintain peace um, so the director stabs nimona slash ambrosia ambrosius and the narrative changes um people or the people of the kingdom they start to view the director as a murderer but then the narrator ch- or the narr sorry the narrative changes back because then the director makes a statement and she kind of brainwashes the kingdom into thinking that the video isn't real. She convinces everyone that Nimona is an evil shape-shifting monster that teamed up with Ballister to kill the queen. And honestly, when I was watching the scene, I thought this was kind of funny because it kind of reminded me of the whole um, kind of AI renaissance that we're currently undergoing with you know deep fakes and stuff but it it was also not funny because it's also kind of scary because i think that we're on the road to stuff like that happening because these deep fakes are getting more and more convincing and i'm afraid that this kind of stuff will happen with like real politicians so you won't even know if what they said is true or not i don't know i i really think they need to do work on like regulation with a with ai because it's really it's really scary it's really really scary anyways so after that whole debacle the director meets the real ambrosius and then she tells him about the story of the great black monster and after hearing about the story ambrosius tries to convince ballister that nimona is evil by showing him the story Okay, so that's all I have to say for now. I'm going to continue this video in part two, so stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with everyone you know, and leave your thoughts and comments. Or leave your thoughts. (laughs) Well, yeah, leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Okay, bye!